afternoon, friends and colleagues in Turkey and in Denmark. I'm pleased to welcome you to this uh, webinar, which is called Smart and Green Energy in Turkey. Here in the studio in Copenhagen, we are uh, a few colleagues, uh, Jens Holz Nielsen, Ivan, uh, Anna, just outside the picture, and myself, Hans Peter Slende. I'll be uh, technically moderating throughout the, the meeting. Um, so welcome. Uh, for the, during this uh, one and a half hour, we are approximately 200 participants in the webinar. Uh, we'll discuss smart and green energy in Turkey, what's happening, what partnerships are existing, how our companies and our authorities collaborating in energy between our countries. We'll have three panels and a number of interesting speakers as we go along. You will have a possibility of uh, putting questions uh, in your chat function. Uh, and when you do it, uh, the different moderators throughout the webinar will be able to read them and to uh, ensure that you have a reply. Uh, we strongly encourage you to put your questions uh, into us and into the webinar to, to, uh, to contribute uh, in that way. And if we are not able to answer all the questions, uh, we'll make sure that there will be answers and comments uh, afterwards as well. Also, we are introducing uh, four questions as polls. So we ask you uh, at four times during the webinar to, to reply to the poll. It's a small, easy question. Uh, and the first one is coming up on your screen to the right. Uh, it should be coming right now. So we ask you to reply to those small questions, which will also feed into our discussion. So once again, welcome. Uh, enjoy the next hour and a half with us. Uh, and I'm pleased to pass the word to uh, the first speaker, Jens Holz Nielsen, who is Director of Global Market Development at the Confederation of Danish Industry. Welcome. Thanks a lot, Hans-Peter. Uh, good afternoon. Merhaba. Very warm welcome to all of you from my side also. Thanks a lot to the Embassy in Ankara and the Consulate General in Istanbul for a very good collaboration. Also thanks to the more than 200 persons that have decided to sign up today. And thank you to today's speakers to take time to participate and contribute today. In Denmark and in DI as such, uh, we see a great potential in the Turkish market. That's for a few reasons. Turkey is, is an impressive and significant market. It's only one flight away. You don't have to, to uh, connect in other airports, which is important at the, in these times specifically. And also Turkey has a demand and a need for exactly the energy solutions that we can offer in Denmark, both when it comes to energy efficiency and, and energy, uh, renewable energy solutions. And not least, we have a long-lasting relationship and, and a good tradition for, for interacting when it comes to improve uh, and, and uh, yeah, uh, both business relations, but also at a, at a trade policy uh, level. Um, and also, I would say that Turkey is maybe the market in the world where, where we have had the most official delegation visits recently both from Denmark to Turkey and from Turkey to Denmark. In 2013, we had an official delegation to Denmark uh, with, that, with the at that time Prime Minister Erdogan. Later that year, we had an official delegation to Turkey headed uh, by the Danish Minister for Business and European Affairs, Nick Hegerup. And the year after, we had the honor of hosting President Gül in this premises in, in Copenhagen. 2016, we had a visit by the Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs. And then in the spring next year, we are looking very much forward to, uh, to uh, bring an important Danish energy delegation to Ankara and Izmir. We hope that you will all have an interesting and inspiring webinar. Uh, so as many of you as possible, hopefully can join our delegation to Turkey next year. And there's a significant amount of subsidies from the Danish Trade Council involved, so you can, you can join the delegation for quite a reasonable price. Of course, uh, we have the big joker of the COVID-19 situation, but we plan as it's business as usual. And in case we have to postpone or reschedule or cancel, you'll be informed in due time, of course. So with these short introductory remarks, uh, I would 
just repeat what you said, Hans, Hans Peter. We would like to have as much interacti interactivity as possible during the webinar. I know it can be, from personal experiences, it can be hard to, to keep focused. You have emails checking in and a lot of uh, other things during a normal work day, but it's only one and a half hour. And we will try and uh, keep you engaged with our polls. And please start writing your, typing your questions in the, in the chat box already now so we can make sure to read them out loud as soon as we get the opportunity for it. So once again, a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much, Jens. Um, and thanks for the replies for the first poll. It shows that uh, approximately a third of the respondents to this first poll uh, indicate that they have existing business between Danish and Turkish uh, energy companies or entities, uh, whereas two thirds is new but interested in uh, hopefully in, in uh, conducting more business together. So this is the first poll and the second poll is coming up on your screen now. As we move on to the panel discussion, which is being moderated by Annette Galskut, who is the Danish Consul General in Istanbul, who will lead us through the next uh, couple of speeches and, it's, uh, and a small debate on green growth business opportunities in, Turkey's, in Turkey. So Annette, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, to uh, Copenhagen, and uh, I am so happy to be here with uh, my two uh, very important panelists. With me here in the Istanbul studio is our ambassador designate to, to Turkey, Mr. Daniel Mann. And with us from Ankara, we have Dr. Oz Jan, who is the advisor uh, to the Ministry of Energy. And um, before we start, I just want to say that I find it extremely encouraging that we have two thirds of the audience today uh, interested in doing business with Turkey, and that uh, seems like a fantastic opportunity for us to uh, to develop here from the Trade Council in Turkey, which we will be looking forward to working with. And uh, without further ado, I will give the word to you, uh, Mr. Ambassador Desimir. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Anita. Um Today actually marked my 16th day as ambassador designate to Turkey. Uh, so being here today is actually my first public virtual uh, appearance and it is truly something very special for me. Uh, despite my limited knowledge about the finer details of the commercial opportunities on the Turkish market, I will give it a try. Um, Turkey has for many years been an interesting market for Danish companies with its diverse and growing economy and its 80 million plus population. I do believe that the focus of today's webinar is another good example of the good commercial match between our two countries. Danish competences meeting Turkish demands. Over the last 16 years, Turkey has display displayed an impressive economic growth from 236 billion US dollars in 2002 to 700 94 billion dollars 16 years later. Even with the corona crisis, which has obviously also affected Turkey, growth is expected to be back on track already next year. According to the Turkish Ministry of Finance and other international financial institutions, the expectation is 5% growth next year. I will now focus a bit more specifically on the sector relevant to our webinar today. Earlier this year, Turkey launched a very ambitious national smart city strategy and action plan. The plan is based on a survey of 400 Turkish cities and has a 40 step approach to make more Turkish cities more livable. The plan primarily focuses on energy supply and efficiency, wastewater management, waste management and water. All these areas, I must say, Danish companies have many years of solid experience in providing sustainable and spot on solutions. At the Danish Embassy and Consulate General, we are already working closely with both Danish and Turkish stakeholders to identify the best areas for cooperation in order to assist and work with Turkey in its continued transition towards more sustainable and livable cities. 
trade between our two countries totaled two billion dollars, or two billion dollars last year, or euro actually, uh, more or less equally shared between uh, import and export. Although a decrease is expected this year due to the pandemic, we continue to remain positive that there is a huge potential for future growth. Our experience has shown us that the Turkish state stakeholders are very interested in Danish sustainable solutions, and there is a strong demand for technology transfer and cooperation. This has already materialized itself in strong partnerships. Our strategic sector cooperation within district energy is a good example. We will hear more about this from Christopher Bützau in the next panel. However, I would like just to mention that the idea of working together authority to authority, government to government, with the inclusion of the business community when relevant, has shown itself to be a very efficient and successful setup. Another interesting opportunity in Turkey is sourcing. If there's, if there's one thing that this year's corona crisis has taught us, it is that Europe is maybe too dependent on Far East uh, markets for our supply chains. Furthermore, research and development ecosystems are developing with the integration of organized industrial zones, startup tech parks, and incubation centers around Turkey. Thus, Turkey does represent a serious nearshoring production alternative worthwhile considering. Lastly, I would like to mention that there's also strong cultural bonds between our two countries. Annually, more than 300,000 Danes actually visit Turkey, primarily as, as tourists, but also uh, many of them for, for business purposes. I do hope that we will soon get back to the same level. We also have a very strong and commercially orientated Turkish community in Denmark, 70,000 persons strong. And I can see from today's participation list that several are represented here today. You represent the perfect bridge builders between Danish and Turkish companies. With this, I would like to conclude by stressing that I do believe that there is a great potential for further strengthening the cooperation and trade between our two countries by combining Turkish ambitious plan for more sustainable and livable cities with the strong Danish expertise and technology solutions within this area. My colleagues in Istanbul and Ankara and myself remain 100% at your disposal if you should need more information about the Turkish market opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador Designate. And uh, I will just uh, pass the word now to Ankara and to, and to Dr. Ozcan. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Anette. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to greet you on behalf of Minister of uh, Energy and Natural Resources and thank for the invitation such an important event of today. And also uh, His Excellency Royal Danish Ambassador, Mr. Danny Anand, very welcome to your new uh, mission to Ankara, to Turkey, very welcome. Uh, before COVID-19, uh, main discussion topic while was uh, the green growth. Uh, our today's challenge is how we will manage green recovery. In my speech shortly, I will try to address the role of energy transition and energy efficiency in green transition with some examples from Turkey. Main pillars of energy transition are electrification, decarbonization and digitalization plus distributed energy. Electricity usage in daily life is increasing. Power sector is coupling with heat and cooling sector plus transportation. As of year 2019, electrical consumption per capita in Turkey was 3,664 kilowatt hour and is expected to reach uh, 4,324 kilowatt hour by 2023, where EU, I must say that EU 28, average consumption is around 6,000 kilowatt hour per capita. 
Turkey has a booming energy demand due to factors such as population increase, uh, rising prosperity, strengthened service sector, and industrialization. Around 1.5 to 2.5 million electrical vehicles are projected to be on road by 2030 in Turkey. Charging infrastructure, plus as our uh, Danish ambassador has said that smart city uh, strategy, uh, charging infrastructure is being developed accordingly. Green tariff has been published, guarantee of origin certification using blockchain, as I said, digitalization on the way for consumers who prefer renewable electricity. Thanks to CapEx decrease and efficiency increase in the renewable, especially in solar and wind energy, renewable energy is already grid competitive. Half of 93 gigawatt of total installed capacity of Turkey come from renewables. Renewable share in electricity production in 2019 was 44%. Turkish national energy and mining policy is addressing every year one gigawatt capacity addition for each in solar and wind. Renewable energy tenders are going on in line with this policy. All energy market reforms, segmentation, privatization, independent regulation by the establishment has resulted in these achievements where most of the investment were undertaken by private sector. For distributed energy, especially solar consumers, ministry have paved the way with easy and quick steps, monthly net metering, a load capacity has increased from one megawatt to five megawatt for each individual consumer. As a result, around 2.8 gigawatt rooftop solar PV is already in the pipeline. Due to increasing share of intermittent renewable resources, the importance of flexible management of the grid is increasing. To cope with this issue, the ministry is keeping As I said, my speech will be two part. One is the uh, energy transition. The second one is energy efficiency. As European Union said that energy efficiency first. Yes, it is really energy efficiency first. Both International Energy Agency, Sustainable Development Scenario, and Iran Remap case are showing that electrification and introducing renewable energy is not sufficient to reach climate goals. Without energy efficiency, where energy efficiency with a 25% contribution to emission reductions is not a negligible one. Increasing energy efficiency in all processes from energy generation to the end use consumption is one of the pillars of the Turkish energy policy as well. The National Energy Efficiency Action Plan published in January 2018 aims reducing the primary energy consumption by 24 per, uh, 14 percent by 2023 with 55 actions. This covers uh, building and services, energy, transport, industry and technology, agriculture and cross-cutting areas. So far, with the National Energy Efficiency Action Plan, we are in line with the uh, proposed uh, targets. I will draw your attention to the building and service sector, which is consuming around 32% of the total primary energy of Turkey. Therefore, energy efficiency in this sector through isolation, district heating and cooling, heat pumps, near zero energy buildings has been addressed by this uh, action plan as well. 15% energy efficiency target has been set for the public buildings with a presidential degree by August uh, 2019, which is aiming that 15% uh, energy efficiency till 2023. And 200 million US dollar credit from World Bank has been allocated for public buildings recovery, which is also including uh, for a uh, near zero energy public buildings within the project scope. Uh, we have taken kindly to Danish companies, not only in the renewable energy, but also in energy efficiency market. While we are talking about green transition, uh, Danish experience has shown since 1993 is unmissable opportunity to, get, to be get inspired. So the strategic sector cooperation project initiated on efficient heating and cooling between Turkey and Denmark. The first phase of the project was finished successfully, as His Excellency Ambassador said that the uh, successful SATEP G2G is uh, resulted very brilliant uh, achievements. And the second phase will be completed in 2023. Uh, we hope that the project activities will contribute to the creation of effectively functioning heat market in Turkey and will make a significant contribution for the integration of the heat and electric sectors. 
In the first phase of the SSC project, we have achieved significant gains in different areas, uh, such as preparing the base of the heat legislation, mapping heat demand of buildings in Turkey, and technical capacity increase by various activities with support of the Danish Minister of uh, Danish Minister for Foreign Affairs, Danish Minister of Climate Utilities and Energy, the Royal Danish Embassy in Ankara, and the Danish Energy Agency. I would like to use the floor uh, to thank to uh, as an opportunity to thank the former ambassador Svend Oling, his support from the very beginning of the project to the last day of his assignment. And I would like to extend my thanks to the deputy head of mission, Mr. Anders Ziegenfeld, Mr. Dennis Holte Alberstan, Ms. Fatma Alay from the Royal Danish Embassy in Ankara, Mr. Bayarn Yul Christensen, uh, Christensen, Mr. Jens Bankstone, Mr. Mikkel. Rosa, and recently retired Mr. Oil Odegaard from Danish Energy Agency for their real sincere teamwork. I believe this event will be another milestone uh, to enhance Turkish-Danish cooperation in this sense. And I turn to Anette, uh, Confederation of Danish Industry, and you all for attending to the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, for your for your very interesting contributions. Maybe if you can mute your microphone, because we have a little echo on here. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much to uh, both uh, of my panelists. Uh, we have time for uh, I think a couple of questions, um, and uh, we have one question here for for the ambassador. So uh, please, uh, Mr. Ambassador, what drives the renewable energy in Denmark and uh, what lessons can we share with Turkey? One of our participants wants to, to know that. Uh, Denmark has for, for a long time had uh, a very, very national, a very ambitious uh, national uh, renewable energy strategy. And uh, we have a very ambitious overall target, basically aiming at phasing out fossil fuels completely by 2050. That is, of course, uh, in, in, in line also with the Sustainable Development Goal number seven, aiming at affordable and clean energy. For Denmark, it has been very much about having a all policy approach. So it's not only an environmental approach or energy approach. It somehow goes through all uh, the different poli policy areas of, of the government. So it's basically uh, also foreign policy. We are working with other countries uh, also to, to together to reach um, a more renewable energy friendly uh, energy consumption globally. Uh, we're looking into production. Uh, we're looking into climate partnerships and, and so forth. Denmark actually, uh, at this point in time, already uh, produces around 50% of its uh, national power consumption from wind alone. And uh, that is the average. We do have a lot of uh, windy days in Denmark. And I do understand on windy days, we actually, we are above 100% of our uh, energy con electri electricity consumption coming from uh, from wind power. So we are, we are on the right track, uh, but still uh, a bit of way to go. One of the reasons why we're also working with uh, Turkey is because Turkey also has uh, presented um, ambitious plans. And I do understand that uh, Turkey is aiming at uh, 16 uh, gigawatt solar and uh, wind power energy by 2027. And I do also understand from my colleagues that, that Turkey is actually uh, moving ahead on, on that target. And we will, of course, uh, continue to work together um, in, in wind power as we are already, but also of, of very big relevance today, uh, the whole issue of uh, district heating. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, time is unfortunately running too fast, but uh, we just have time for a very... Uh, a uh, short answer from you, uh, Dr. Urstjan, on a, a question from one of our participants that now, of course, we have COVID-19 and, uh, and with Turkey's very ambitious plans uh, and the National Energy Efficiency Action Plan, uh, which, you know, before COVID was going really, really well, is there 
one or two things you can mention, uh, which is the effect of the COVID-19, which, which we can expect that will have some sort of effect on, uh, on rolling out this plan. And, and uh, please, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Annette. Actually, I a little bit speed up my speech uh, to, to cover the uh, five minutes, but uh, again, thank you for moderation. Uh, COVID-19 has impacted in globally in most of the sectors, not only the energy, but also all related sectors, and especially uh, supply chain has been impacted a lot. So we can see that the result in the renewable energy, some delays uh, and some energy efficiency investment is on the way of uh, delay. Uh, as I said, in the, in the National Energy Efficiency Action Plan 2017, 18 uh, and 19 was in line with the, in the plan. Uh, we may see some delays, especially in the first half of the year. There are some signs of, uh, let's say, recovery in the, in the market. But uh, in overall, uh, in 2023 targets and 2027 and 2030 targets, uh, we don't see uh, such a big impact. So we are working on some, uh, let's say, recovery policies, how we can manage some this uh, gap to cover uh, with this action. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's uh, very good news. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, and uh, I will close off by giving you the results of the second uh, poll. And that uh, was which energy subsectors are you primarily interested in? And 22% of our audience is interested in wind energy, 22% is interested in district heating, and 18% is interested in energy efficiency, 2% in bioenergy, 9 in waste to energy, and 18% in solar energy, and 9% uh, are interested in others. So with that, and with these results, I would like to thank you very much here from Istanbul and give the floor back to our Copenhagen office. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Annette and speakers. Uh, we move on to the next panel. Uh, and meanwhile, you can see a third poll coming up uh, on your screen. We hope you will answer that question as well. Now, uh, we've heard about uh, things happening in Turkey and uh, also in Denmark. And uh, the name of this panel or the title of this panel is Partnerships Do Matter, because there are existing partnerships, both company to company, and authority to authority, they are good for the involved and they're good for all of us because they inspire and they uh, contribute or constitute an axis we're building on and which benefits all of us. So I'm very pleased to pass the floor to the one in charge of the public uh, side from our, from our, uh, from the Danish side, which is uh, Christopher Bötzau, who is director general for the Danish Energy Agency. So Christopher Bötzau, over to you. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank the Danish Federation for Industry and the uh, Trade Council of Turkey, the ambassador, and especially my colleague, uh, Ozcan, for being here with us today. And uh, let me give you a short introduction to uh, the Danish-Turkey partnerships. Um, Denmark is a, it's a very small country, as you may know. We only stands for... Um, 0.1% of the total CO2 emissions in uh, the world. And uh, Turkey stands for 10 times more. If you look at the population, Turkey's population is 15 times the, the Danish population. But even though we are a small country, we uh, have great uh, experiences. And, and um, to, uh, to help the world, to help Turkey, and to help Denmark going into a, a more and more green transition, we have built up government-to-government -government partnerships with 16 countries among the world. And one of our close partnerships is with Turkey regarding heating and offshore wind. Denmark has more than uh, 40 years of experiences when it comes to uh, heating and uh, more than 30 years when it comes to offshore wind. And these experiences we want to share and we want to share with partners and countries who want to listen. And that's why I'm so uh, glad that we can be here today. And I'm very proud and glad for the good cooperation between Denmark and Turkey. 
Our cooperation relies on partnerships. We bring Danish experts together with the counterparts in partner countries to meet the challenges of going green. But how can these partnerships pave the way for Danish companies and Turkish companies and support an increased cooperation between Danish and Turkish companies and business uh, in the years to come? Well, government-to-government -government cooperation projects help promote the Danish sustainable energy model. These 40 years of experiences, which subsequently help promote Danish companies providing sustainable energy solutions on a Turkish market. And at the same time, it helps the Turkish companies going into the green transition hand in hand with Danish companies. I believe that our authority cooperation will help Turkish authorities develop sustainable framework conditions promoting the green energy transition. And uh, it seems to me that uh, our partnership with the Turkish authority lead to very substantial discussions on specific solutions and problems. And here we have a very close cooperation with the embassy in Ankara and the Danish consulate in Istanbul, where we can join forces to highlight the Danish company's competences and the Danish energy model, often in partnership with local businesses, which can provide the necessary solutions. We at the Danish Energy Agency is ready to support the development of the Danish-Turkish trade cooperation. But unfortunately, and due to the COVID-19, we have had to reschedule the physical trade mission this month. Personally, I'm looking very much forward and planning to join the planned Danish energy trade delegation in March 2021. You are all mostly welcome to contact our project team here at the Danish Energy Agency and at the Embassy in Ankara to share your perspectives on Turkey's energy market and to discuss how Danish solutions can benefit our partners in Turkey. Thank you very much. So for this uh, introduction to the energy partnership on the authority side, uh, I'm pleased to pass the floor to the next speaker, who is uh, Anton Koller. Divisional President for District Energy uh, at Danfoss uh, to describe the district energy journey uh, in Turkey uh, seen from his uh, perspective. So please, Anton Koller, the floor is yours. Is he with us? Are you with us, Anton? Apparently, Mr. Another caller is coming in. Hello, you can hear me? Now you're with us. Yes, Anton. I hope you heard my introduction. We are pleased to pass the floor to you, Anton, uh, Divisional President of District Energy at Danfoss, to, to share your views on district and your knowledge on and insight on district energy journey in Turkey. Please. Good. I don't know if you can see my video. Somehow it doesn't work, but uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here today and share the district energy journey in Turkey, and uh, I think <clears throat> Danfoss had been for for many years in Danfoss in Turkey for over 20 years, and our current footprint is around 110 people, and uh, we have acquired uh, Duff Energy in uh, five years ago, and we are in the middle of a bigger acquisition with Eaton Hydraulics, and what had been announced, and uh, so in the future we will have. Uh, 2,500 people more in Turkey, and so you can see we are pretty committed to the market and see big opportunities in, in Turkey and also moving forward with this econo economy. Why district energy for Turkey? I think uh, the why, I think it's for us clear, it's making a tremendous impact on the economy and the positive side. I think you can divide that in two steps. One is also, as mentioned before, energy efficiency first, and here, when you look at power plants, which are 
so to say, not utilizing all the waste heat, what is there. I think this is a great opportunity, and it's uh, roughly 30% uh, we could uh, heat with alone this waste heat uh, uh, for residential heating and also domestic hot water. And if you calculate that further, that, of course, gives a tremendous saving on natural gas, around 12%. And if you convert that into money, this is really, you know, a lot of money. It's two billion U.S. dollars, so it has a significant impact on the on the state, on the government, uh, and also on the uh, account balances. So I think this is really, I would say, the first step, important one: energy efficiency first. And the second step, of course, is the what the journey towards CO2 free and uh, to have CO2 um, free heating and district energy. And here, Turkey, again, has a great resource. Turkey has uh, an optimum situation regarding geothermal energy. And by that, if that is really used, 30% uh, uh, of the heating could be covered by that. And here you can see district energy is a future-proof uh, investment because these networks, of course, can be switched easily from waste heat from the power plants towards the geothermal. So I think this is a, is a great opportunity. And how does a journey looks like? I think a good example of a journey, how it can look like is Soma. It's in the west of uh, Turkey. And here, the waste heat from the lignite power plants have been used uh, to heat the city. And, and this gives uh, tremendous uh, benefits to the city, first of all. I think the households don't need to fire with coal anymore, as they used to do. So the air quality is really going up and, uh, and is really improving for the better. You can really see this and the people see this. So I think it has a great benefit to the residents. And I think in these times, as we're talking about Corona a lot, then of course, this is also putting a completely different system on reliability and safety. So you're not dependent on bringing coal and making sure that the local installations are all sort of maintained. It's a bigger system. So and this has a very high uh, usability and very high reliability. So I think this is a very good example of how a journey for a uh, city can look like. And with that, I'd like to hand over to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Anton Koller, uh, for sharing your insights. Um, you know, um, the, we have we are being uh, we are receiving a few questions. Uh, you're welcome to to put more questions. Uh, we may answer some of them, and the rest we will make sure to answer uh, later on or post the the webinar. But I'm pleased to pass the floor to to another one on the ground in uh, in Ankara. We actually have the one operating on a daily basis with the. Energy Partnership, which is Dennis Holde Skov Albertsen, Sector Councillor for Energy in Ankara. So please, the floor is yours, Dennis. Thank you very much, Hans Peter. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure uh, to be in Turkey now, uh, working and living for more than five years. So you can see, even in this time, I've seen uh, the commitment from our Turkish colleagues. I should say, during this time here, my focus has been almost solely on. Uh, on developing and facilitating uh, the current energy uh, cooperation be between uh, the Danish authorities and the Turkish Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. Um, and we, we uh, progress doing that. We started back in 2015 with the initial uh, preparations. And then in 2017, early, we started officially uh, on the first phase of, uh, of the part of the cooperation focusing on, on heating and cooling. And then in 2018, uh, we started uh, exploring together with our Turkish colleagues, uh, maybe starting an offshore uh, cooperation, offshore wind. This started then officially in 2019. And then as a sign of, I think, good cooperation and, of, and hopefully uh, being satisfied on both sides, uh, both tracks of this cooperation were extended uh, in, in early 2020 for another three years, which means until the end of uh, 2020. Uh, I should say that that our our cooperation on on heating, uh, just to give you some examples, uh, some things were also said before, but some of the work that we've been doing and are doing still is assisting uh, the work on the on the drafting of the heat market regulation. Also, um, what we will be looking at going forward is, is is pilot heat planning in municipalities, which is one of the pillars in the Danish system. And I should also say that. Uh, Running through the cooperation, we are assisting the uh, Turkish colleagues 
in uh, developing national policies and strategies uh, and solutions uh, for creating a, an energy efficient uh, heat, heat market in Turkey, as also mentioned by Dr. Ozcan and also by uh, Christopher Butzo earlier. Within the uh, offshore wind, uh, which is a newer cooperation, Uh, the things we are looking at is uh, tender uh, design and procedures and also a financial framework. One thing which also is not to, to be underestimated is the port facilities and infrastructure. We've seen that in Denmark. And then uh, finally, we hope to help uh, develop a roadmap for the longer term uh, for, this to keep, uh, for offshore wind in Turkey. I would say having the extension of the uh, program really makes a difference because what we see and what we believe in is that if you do this kind of cooperation it has to be long term the key thing in the danish uh, turkish cooperation is that we don't work for the turkish colleagues but we work together with them so you can say that we are not a team fly flying in and leaving a big report uh, behind but we are actually helping uh, share our best practices completely open book and then uh, hopefully uh, enabling uh, Turkey to take steps quicker than Denmark did. So th this is the key. Our cooperation partners are uh, for, the, for the heating and cooling is the uh, Department of Energy Efficiency and Environment, which is actually headed by uh, Dr. Oz Jan as well. And then the other one on offshore wind is uh, the General Directorate of uh, Energy Affairs, uh, which is headed by uh, Murat Aydin. So I hope that we will uh, continue to uh, develop these uh, cooperations. And parallel with this, we're working very closely with our colleagues in Istanbul, trying to, to uh, improve the connections uh, between Danish and Turkish companies within the energy area. So we have a seamless cooperation, which also this event is a sign of. Um, so I think that's all I want to say, but I would uh, like to say that all of you are very great that you all signed up for this. And hopefully we will be able to do more events like, like this in the future. So back to you, Hans-Peter. Much, Dennis Albertsen. Um, well, I can, I can conclude at this point that uh, the partnership is a success because more than 70% of the audience for this webinar knows about it already. But we are grateful to have more details both on the policy side and on the more uh, hands-on side, which you have given us uh, just now. Uh, we have a couple of questions which I will uh, try to pass on to to you and uh, further questions as I said are welcome. Um, one question relates to uh, is there any intention from Danish public or semi-public authorities or private associations to support solar power projects in Turkey? So um, that goes to, I think, uh, uh, the embassy, the energy agency, w whether whether solar energy is part of the the thing and uh, or the, the partnership and whether there is an interest for, for, for solar projects and any investment plans. So please. Maybe I should take this one. I should say that there is no specific uh, focus on solar, but it's very clear that when you look at, at district heating, Uh, solar is an obvious uh, part in the energy mix uh, and part of, part of the thing that we do in Denmark, which is working very well, is to make sure that most uh, district heating uh, facilities don't have only one uh, fuel source, but more. So you, so you can use them when they are each are the cheapest and most available. Uh, one sign of that is also that we are looking at uh, using more electricity also to to heating purposes and transport purposes. So, so, so to answer it quickly, uh, solar doesn't have a specific focus in our program, but indirectly are definitely, is uh, definitely covered. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dennis. There's another question which goes like this. What is the degree of interest to concentrated solar power for heating and industry, thermal purposes, both in Denmark and Danish investments in solar rich countries such as Turkey? Well, um, i can speak on the on the Danish competence. Although there's, the sun is not so strong in Denmark, uh, we in fact we have a, a visible solar industry, and particularly in a concentrated solar or solar thermal, we have competences. Some of it goes into district heating. The lower temperature and the higher temperature is the concentrated, and we do have a sector and some significant companies in this field. So, uh, and I'll be glad to pass on the. Uh, I don't have the name of the one who, who asked uh, with me, but uh, I'll make sure you get the details of, of this company. And maybe I can pass it on to the Turkish side, uh, 
uh, Danish or others uh, to hear whether you have any so concentrated solar companies uh, that that operate alongside with you. I should say that in the cooperation that we are doing, because it's authority to authority cooperation, we, we don't have included specific individual companies. Um, but I should say that uh, that it is obvious that that one of the largest potential of renewable energy in Turkey is uh, solar. And as I should say, one thing which I think is, is also obvious is that um, uh, photovoltaics uh, is the more dominant uh, source of solar uh, energy in Turkey. Where well, I think we from Denmark will come with some some recommendations on not to forget uh, solar thermal uh, sources. So, but uh, but we, we we can see that there's a lot of uh, projects within solar in in Turkey. We can also see that the authorities are very very interested in uh, developing solar more. So it's it's logical I think that it'll be a, a key part in the uh, district heating and uh, cooling area. But uh, working with commercial companies individually, it's more the responsibility and it's being led by our colleagues in Istanbul. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, next question, I think uh, Anton Koller may be the right to answer this in the first instance. It goes like this. The district heating systems we see in Denmark are mostly cooperatives. How are similar systems financed in Turkey? And are they under regulation in order to secure f f the fair heat prices? I think that the, 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 the systems are in Turkey are in the development. I think you can see a few um, existing networks, and I think uh, a new law is, uh, to my knowledge, coming. And I think in Turkey we have much more a concession model uh, coming up uh, in that way and, and less the cooperative. So I think it would be still a private model as what I can see over see in, in Turkey. But maybe, Dennis, you can add here more on the model side. Did well, um, I, I think one thing is it, there is definitely, as also uh, Dr. Ostian was saying, uh, one of the, the key things for the Turkish government is to develop a, a sustainable and efficient heat market. And it's part of our uh, cooperation as well, where we are helping to draft regulation. And I think uh, the signal so far, and this, this is not by any means uh, a big surprise, is maybe that the, Turk the Turkish model will be some, somewhat a hybrid of the of the Danish and all the models, which means that there can be uh, uh, municipal-owned uh, facilities, but they can also be private. And there can also be maybe facilities which would be partly owned by one side and the other. So I think there is a, there's a big degree of flexibility. The key thing is uh, to have good supply and reasonable prices. Thank you, Anton and Dennis. Uh, next question goes like this. EKF and the Turkish EXIM signed a collaboration agreement recently. Are there any initiatives to promote collaboration between Turkish <coughs> and Danish contractors in third countries? I don't know whom would be able to, to chip in on this one. I think EKF is a significant partner in, to Danish exporters, uh, as I believe EXIM is probably in Turkey. We don't have any volunteers to answer, but, but uh, we will dig into it and, and we'll try to provide an answer uh, after the seminar to, to this question as well. Maybe I can say maybe, and maybe Hans-Peter, I, I can say that because we have a very close uh, uh, cooperation with the EKF, uh, us and also Anet in, in Istanbul, uh, we will make sure that we get back to these questions, uh, which uh, we might not have been able to answer uh, after the seminar. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think um, we'll conclude this part or this panel, uh, thanking the three speakers for sharing the, your insights with us. And although 72% of us already knew about the partnership, I think we learned more. Uh, and the rest, of course, learned it all. So uh, thanks for that. And we are glad to be part of this partnership and lean on the partnership and bring in further companies into the partnership that, that exists. At this point, I'll uh, pass the floor to... There'll be another question in the poll. Uh, so look to the right lower side of your screen and please give an answer to the fourth question. And while you do that, I'll pass the floor to uh, uh, Seda Bilgen, who is also a well-known figure to us working in the partnership 
Uh, she's senior man trade manager uh, and team leader for energy and environment uh, at the Council of General in, uh, in Istanbul. So please say that the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, dear guests, welcome to our last panel of the webinar. Uh, so far, we have talked about the uh, strategic sector cooperation agreement between Turkey and Denmark, and we just touched upon the uh, political side of it and some uh, business development and uh, with the focus on the uh, green transition and renewable energy. And now uh, with my uh, panel guests, uh, we will be talking about some real case uh, scenarios, real cases from the field that uh, in my panel uh, we have uh, our work energy technique uh, active in the biomass sector, and we have a Resolux uh, representative uh, of Turkey uh, in the wind energy sector. So uh, we will just dig down uh, about uh, a newcomer point of view from a Danish company, like what are the challenges and opportunities. So uh, my first question uh, to the panelists is, uh, can you walk us through the, uh, just your establishment story in Turkey? Uh, what are your experiences and lessons uh, learned so far? Uh, can we start with uh, Aldrok Energy Technique? Hello, uh, and welcome to today's web event, my topic, uh, Constructing the Biggest Biomass Plant in Turkey. Uh, thank you for your uh, taking time out and being here today. And thank you, Seda, for this question. Uh, actually, as AET, we are active in Turkey since, since 2014. And uh, uh, our company was uh, managing the sales activities from our headquarter office, Albo, Denmark. And uh, finally, we established uh, a local entity in Istanbul by 2019. And uh, we are acting under the name of AB Turkey uh, and uh, well, uh, it was a long journey for us to establish a company in Turkey because uh, it was not so easy for us. Uh, I don't know how the other companies uh, passed, but unfortunately, uh, we had uh, we made the company in order to handle the trade with locals and to handle the import and export activities uh, from Turkey and uh, from Denmark to Turkey, and it has uh, proven to be a relatively long procedure primarily because we decided to make a joint stock company, Ayşe. Uh, there, there was a lot of procedure stamps and uh, notary letters, uh, apostilles, etc., which we had to uh, take from uh, Denmark. And uh, uh, so it was a quite long procedure for us. And this, of course, some uh, of it can be done with the power of attorney, but uh, there will be a, a need for personal presence in Turkey. Uh, of the selected board members and the CEO from the group, for example. And, uh, and also the, another challenge for us was the uh, establishing a, how can I say, local bank accounts, et cetera. So at the end, uh, we establish uh, a company without any big problems. And uh, now uh, we, we are running our business in Turkey properly. And uh, uh, end of 2019, uh, we won uh, Turkey's biggest uh, biomass-fired uh, power plant, uh, which will burn 250,000 tons of poultry litter and will produce 35 megawatt electric power uh, to the grid. Yeah. Okay, uh, floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for this webinar and thanks for the qu question as well. And it's also a long journey for us, uh, for Resolux Group. And Resolux Turkey was as established on January of this year, 2020, as a joint venture partnership that was collaborated with Turkish firm Bayramolu and Danish firm Resolux APS, which is located in Odense, Denmark. And Resolux Turkey company uh, is also located at Bursa, which is the port biggest city, industrial city in Turkey. And this mentioned partnership was decided to establish as a structure long time ago. Meanwhile, the beginning of last year, 2019. After that time, we have been worked deeply to combine both parts advantage points. As you all know that we have been in a deep struggle 
because of COVID-19. And as Resolux Turkey, we faced with these impacts from the beginning, because just after two months, uh, Resolux uh, faced with these impacts. And this was a big challenge for us. But we prefer to look on new opportunities to get more game in these dark days, because each challenge also offers new chances as well. And regarding the difficulties of supply, supply chain of wind industry, Resolux Group sees Turkey market as a second up after China. And uh, as Denmark is one of leading countries in wind, wind industry, this is also a general point of view as well as for whole industry. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, my second question would be, of course, you have mentioned about some of the challenges like uh, bureaucracy and uh, COVID-19, which are like, I think, global challenges in uh, every country. But focusing on the uh, sector specific uh, opportunities and challenges, uh, with a focus on the biomass and wind specifically, can you just, uh, just further elaborate on that? Again, uh, let's continue with Kenan and then Okan, please. Okay. Uh, yes. When a, a variety of Sorry. biomass uh, sources are taken into account, such as agricultural and municipal waste, along with animal residues, biomass offers very high potential to meet one third of uh, Turkey's annual electricity uh, consumption. In Turkey, uh, modern and technologically mature systems are not as widespread in biomass energy as in solar and wind energy. The biomass energy systems, which have proved techni uh, technically and economically sufficient worldwide, have not been fully put into use in Turkey, unfortunately, except for a few biomass power plants. Despite the country's rich uh, biomass potential and technological infrastructure, we still uh, see very low efficient and uh, uh, poor, uh, uh, poor uh, designed uh, systems in Turkey. Uh, the biggest challenge uh, in Turkey, we see that uh, the renewable energy support system for after 2020 is still not uh, clear. So uh, as we see around uh, our uh, investors, uh, they, they cannot uh, make a clear roadmap for the after 2020. So uh, we hope that uh, it will be announced soon by the energy ministry. Uh, well, uh, to utilize Turkey's biomass and waste potential, government incentives and supports are very important, uh, as well as its need to be obtained a social acceptance of new technologies through education and promotional activities. And uh, we believe that the parliament members uh, also must be educated uh, about the advanced technologies because we see that a different approach from the uh, parliament people uh, and uh, uh, about uh, biomass power plants and waste energy power plants. Uh, we believe that uh, it should be more uh, educated and giving more information about those technologies. Thank you. Uh, okay, I, I can go on uh, the same question as well. Uh, Turkey offers many advantages uh, and we can list really good advantages on wind industry with details. Due to production, for example, and also localization, Turkey offers a uh, big advantage for us because uh, wind industry has already experienced in Turkey maybe more than 20 years. And this country has got big potential with better economic conditions as well. For uh, direct foreign investments, it could be really a good competition globally and Turkey offers best solution with skilled, experienced engineers and also technicians. This is really uh, one of the important and vital so, uh, resources for wind industry as well. Because important global and local OEMs and also tower manufacturers have been structured for almost 20 years in Turkey. So that Turkey's potential on this industry and also Danish know-how with our long experiences, we mean 20 years of experiences of Resolux Group is a good result and also sustainable co cooperation for our joint venture. And uh, we can say that 
our sector activity uh, could offer us many more years with sustainable conditions. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm just checking some of the questions from the audience and uh, one question is very relevant. Uh, if you make any suggestions for uh, the, the foreign slash Danish companies who want to enter the Turkish market, uh, what would, what would uh, that be like from your side? Uh, what should they consider first? And uh, so what, uh, based on your experience, what would your suggestion be? Okay, uh, maybe uh, the proper market due diligence and the uh, uh, go-to-market uh, studies should be done properly. And, uh, and also understanding the Turkish culture, the people, regulations, and the way uh, they do business is very essential in Turkey. Uh, never underestimate uh, that point. Uh, in addition to that, I believe that the local resources and local key players uh, related to your <coughs> sectors are generally door openers in Turkey. In this regard, building a local network or at least working with a local person who has this uh, network uh, will boost the chance of success and uh, uh, make your success better. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I think I can I can contribute as well. Uh, just uh, two or three sentences could be available from my point of view. Uh, yes, we are Danish company, Danish group, but uh, we look. Uh, on the industry with Turkish culture, Turkish way. So we combine two uh, advantages. And one big advantage is coming from uh, Denmark uh, with really good know-how and experience. But the other advantage uh, what is one of uh, the key points is labor costs and also skilled uh, human resources with good conditions good economic conditions, because uh, this country has experienced as well, uh, as mentioned previous on previous questions and answers. And so that uh, once we combine uh, these two figures, we can offer the solutions uh, on uh, each requirements. And we can make a really a good localization with many items with the same or uh, better quality. So uh, we can say that uh, we can offer solution with Danish way, but uh, in better economic conditions, thanks to this joint venture. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I would like to add uh, one point, Mr. Okan. I fully agree with Mr. Okan's comments. And uh, yes, working with local uh, suppliers, with the local companies are very important. And uh, our company was doing that research and uh, how can I say, uh, supplier evaluations since many months and maybe years and uh, finally we found really good quality uh, uh, equipment providers uh, from turkish market and and now we are using some of them in our project uh, this is this is also very important to uh, being localized and uh, use the local suppliers in your projects to to be more competitive thank you valuable insights from uh, both of the companies just coming directly from uh, experiences and lessons learned. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, in the previous panel we had a uh, question about Mr. EKF. Can I understand? Okay, maybe mute. Uh, yeah, can you please mute the microphone? Please? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, in, the, in the previous panel, uh, we have been, there was a question about EKF, and uh, as a state council in Turkey, uh, and the Danish representation, of course, we still, we still need to mute both Kiran and uh, can you mute your microphone? Yes, please with you. Uh, uh, oh. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have worked with Danish Exim Bank a lot. 
and uh, Turkey is uh, in the energy field is one of the biggest sectors of the Danish Exim Bank, and they have uh, just helped uh, almost building up the wind energy sector in Turkey with their uh, long-term credit and financing. So we still uh, work with them in several other markets. And we also have uh, IFU, uh, Danish, Invest Danish uh, Development Fund for uh, Danish Investment Fund for Developing Countries. So we are also working with them very closely. So if you have any questions about financing uh, with these uh, stakeholders, please just contact us afterwards. And having said that, I just want to close this panel just uh, mentioning about the result of uh, poll uh, number four, which is, uh, are you interested in the Danish energy trade mission to Turkey? Mr. Okan, just, just hang on a second. I think it's okay. Mute your phone. I think it's your microphone, Mr. Okan. Yes, it's already muted, but I don't know. It's also, if you can disconnect because we go to the final parts. Mr. Oken, you can just disconnect the line. Sit up. Okay, uh, shall I continue? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, uh, technicalities on these webinars, always we uh, welcome them. Uh, so the result of the poll uh, number four is, are you interested in the Danish energy trade mission to Turkey planned for uh, March 2021? And 93% uh, of the participants said yes. Uh, so I think uh, that can be a good conclusion and success for uh, our webinar. And having said that, I'm just uh, giving the floor to you and just uh, muting myself uh, off and disconnecting. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Seda, and panelists, for this uh, third panel and for the conclusion that most, uh, the vast majority, would be interested in the upcoming uh, trade mission to, to Turkey when it's focusing on energy in March. I'm looking forward to that. Now, let me just uh, uh, not conclude as such, but thank the speakers. I can tell you we have been in Copenhagen, we have been in Istanbul, we have been in Ankara, we have been in Bursa. We have been in Austria even uh, during this one hour plus. We have talked to public authorities, ministries, we have talked to private entities and, uh, and associations. We have witnessed that there's an extremely vibrant energy landscape in both our countries and there's really an appetite for collaboration. We have a Danish energy landscape which is small driven by ambition and innovation uh, and strong climate targets uh, and some strong experience. We have a Turkish situation, a large country, a growth country with huge ambitions and huge power and muscle to, to uh, realize a green transition. Um, we're having an upcoming visit. We are, meanwhile, after this webinar, we will share uh, information with you. You're, you can go back and re uh, view the webinar and we will upload, make sure that all presentations are uploaded and uh, we'll also make sure that you get an email and the ones, the questions that were not answered or not answered in full, we will uh, come back with more information and leads to in that direction as well. Uh, so that being said, I think um, what rests with me is to thank my uh, colleagues Ivan and also Anna sitting next. Maybe we can see Anna uh, also. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining and uh, good luck with the, with the f ongoing business in the energy field. Uh, and I think I w I'm learning a, a Turkish phrase here, which is thank you, Tesekür Ederim. So enjoy the afternoon and bye for now.